All right, hello everybody. How are y'all doing? This is my Hi. friend Christy Grimm, and this is my first video that I'm doing. It's a little bit of a learning curve. It's, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. I can turn it this way. A little bit of a learning curve here, but as we have our little discussion time, yeah, that actually is. Thank you. Okay. We're going to be focusing on Christy and her beauty and the things that I see that stand out in her and um, just kind of ask her some questions about her walk and how she's got to this place and hope it can be an encouragement to any of you watching. So Christy Grimm, this is my sweet sister in Christ. Hello, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> All right, so Christy, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions. Um, to start, I wanna just say, you were the first person that I met. We, I've told you this story before, but Christy was the first person I met moving to Florida from Washington State. And being new to homeschooling, when my son was entering first grade, I was like, oh, I need to establish some kind of a connection. So um, I looked online and just found a local homeschool co-op and Christy was the president. So I gave her a call, her number was listed and she was so hospitable and sweet. And she was like, oh yeah, come on over just bring all the kids I've got I think you only had five kids at the time yeah. but yeah. now she has six and uh, I was like oh my gosh seriously this is awesome so being a homeschool mom to five children and I was just expecting <laughs> like <laughs> kind of like a woman in a bonnet with like a long <laughs> denim skirt not that there's anything wrong with it but it was just like this image that I had that was not just I don't know where it came from little house on the prairie or something and I was expecting her to be maybe a little matronly. But then she opens the door and I'm like, hot dang, she's a hot babe. <laughs> and so she invites me in and it's just been a growing and a blossoming friendship ever since. And so that's just over six or about six years ago now. So yeah, that's crazy. Oh yeah. Sawyer was 12 weeks old and oh, yeah. she got pregnant shortly thereafter with her youngest now about maybe a year after that or something. Mm -hmm. But Anyway, so it's just been a really fun journey with Christy, and um, yeah, I feel really connected to her and consider her a sister, so this is going to be a fun and easy interview, but um, it's going to also be powerful and deep, so get ready. <laughs> so Christy, um, not only does your physical beauty stand out to me, um, you're such a good teacher, you're an amazing orator, a wonderful friend, wife, mother, all of those things. Um, one of the things that really has stood out to me is your discipline to just go into a quiet space, um, just to connect with the Lord, worship, learn how to hear his voice. And then you, you're so good about telling others with your articulation and just your great speaking ability, what it is that you've learned in that time with the Lord so that others can have that wisdom that comes through you and grow themselves. So I have really been sharpened by you in that regard. And I just, I wanna ask you a little bit about, well, there are a number of questions I sent to you ahead of time, but your wilderness season, and for those who don't know maybe what that is, when I say a wilderness season, just a time where you're like, what am I doing? I feel like stagnant or like I'm not hearing the Lord or I don't know really what my purpose or drive or whatever it is that season I want to hear about that for you what if, if you if you're still going through it what that has looked like for you um I want to hear about your dreams I want to hear your or your you can use them interchangeably your heart's desire your calling your purpose mm -hmm. all of those things mm -hmm. and how the Lord has maybe peeled back the layers of your heart over time mm -hmm. to realize the core of what that is have you known them since childhood have they come about more lately you know just what it's looked like for you so I guess to start um and I would like to obviously get into the beauty for ashes and how that has come about since mm -hmm. all of this so I'll just let you kind of lead but tell me about your wilderness season what has it looked like for you how long was or is it mm -hmm. Um, how have you learned to enjoy and appreciate your time while in the wilderness season? <laughs> it's a loaded question. For sure. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, wilderness seasons are difficult, but they have their own beauty in, in and of itself. And um, uh, wilderness seasons, your entire life doesn't have to necessarily be a, a wilderness season. But um, And when I began to, instead of putting um, entireties on everything, uh, and began to say, uh, okay, I'm in a wilderness season regarding this particular area. Got it made it much easier to walk through that, yeah. knowing that there is still um, joyous seasons yeah. in my life at that same time. Awesome. And so that made it really much more palatable to be able to walk through the wilderness season. But So there's wilderness seasons in hearing God's voice, and sometimes I'm not hearing him like I want to be hearing him, but sure. it's in those times where I get to just sit with him and kind of crawl up on his lap, if you will, awesome. and um, just kind of meditate and think about all the things that he has already taught me up to this point and just awesome. sit on that and kind of marinate in what he's already been doing in me. Yeah. Um, because yeah, he's he always wants to teach us, but he he also wants us to just enjoy him and who he is. Yeah. So just because he may not be speaking in a particular moment doesn't yeah. mean he's forgotten about me. It doesn't mean he loves me any less. But mm -hmm. he may just want to just be with me and just just let us be together in relationship right then instead of Beautiful. teaching a new something. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. Um, when you've been in a wilderness season. Do you find that as you've grown as a woman, maybe you've done this earlier on and maybe not so much now lately, but do you find like you compare a lot to other women or other people seasons, other couple seasons, other family seasons? How, how has that shaped or evolved in you? I definitely used to compare a lot and it was a not just a stronghold, it was like bondage in my life of me comparing myself or my family or my husband and I yeah. to others around me or to what I was seeing, especially like on social media or sure. something like that. But um, God really took me through um, a very special time of breaking those bonds of um, comparison. And it, it truly is, I can't I can't compare my family to another person's family. I can't compare me to another woman. I can't compare my children to anyone else's children. Yeah. We we are we're so individual. There isn't like a comparison. We have a sure. different journey and a different walk and and so it really truly does no good to compare ourselves to where someone else is. And yeah. so that the more I'm able to focus on the journey that God has me on, the I'll say easier it yeah. is to walk yeah. through your wilderness season. Yeah. And um, I, I feel like in some ways I am currently in a wilderness season, whereas I'm not hearing the Lord's voice and he's not revealing as much as he did um, this time last year. Last year was this crazy vibrant season wow. and he was revealing so much to me and yeah. speaking so many things to me. Um, mm. But it's, he brought me through all of that. He brought me to a place where it's time and I know that it's time and I know I'm in the right space right now. So awesome. even though I'm not hearing his voice as clearly as I, of course, would desire to hear his voice, mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's not having the effect on me that it would have previously because yeah. I've learned what his voice sounds like. And because we still have such an intimacy together. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Um, so as you kind of go through that wilderness season, um, for me, I can do a lot of internal self-reflection and, okay, kind of refiguring out my dreams and is, did, I, did I think that that's an accurate assessment of where I should be and what I really want to do? Tell me about your dreams, your heart's desires. Um, I know, again, these are all loaded questions. If you can, like the evolution or the process of you learning about your dreams were they childhood were they you know in your 20s 30s when did you start figuring those out thinking about them and um let's answer that part and then i can ask you a little bit more after that um yeah definitely a loaded question it definitely brings up emotions um the first time that uh the first career i ever wanted was as a 
I was probably five or six year old little girl. My mom was putting me to bed one night and I'm not sure, I don't know the conversation. I'm not, I have no idea, but I just remember saying to my mom that I wanted to be a missionary. And that was the first like <laughs> inkling and the first desire like in my heart of yeah. wanting to like, I guess just help people or help people to know who Jesus is. I just had that desire to want to do that. Awesome. Now, of course, walking through my teenage years and truly going through a, a long season of rebellion and hurt and anger and all of those kinds sure. of things, I didn't remember that at all. But, you know, God brings things full circle, oh, right? Sure. And um, sure. so as he's... Um, as he's been working and massaging my heart and um, healing me in different areas, that is at the core of mm. my heart's desire is, and you know, that's, we're all called to be a missionary, quote sure. unquote. It's such a glamorized word or whatever, but it's really not. It's just how you live life. But um, right. so in the past, I don't know, several years, what, five years or something, um, God's taken me on a really deep journey of heart healing and growing. And um, mm. within that, each time he heals a piece of my heart, it it just, it's so healed mm. and so new that mm. I want to just shout it from the rooftops. Like awesome. you can't experience awesome. something and not want someone else to experience that same good thing. Absolutely. And it, I mean, it's the same idea if you have the very best piece of, chocolate pie you've ever had <laughs> and you're with somebody else you want them to Take taste it yes, yes for sure. and it's that same idea of just every time he heals a little place in my heart mm. I deeply desire for everyone else to experience it too and um so it's gone from my dreams have gone from you know five years ago having a a dream of wanting to speak in front of women and yeah. wanting to just <laughs> I don't know and definitely a part of that was you know, the wrong motivation. I wanted to, you know, it was like, it was me. It Got was it. about me. Yeah. And, um, but I had to, you know, I have to be honest about that. And that was yeah. what I was desiring at the yeah. same time. Sure. So while still desiring that, I was like, okay, Lord, yeah, I, like I really desire this thing, but I know my motivation isn't pure. Wow. So that's a mature place to be at where you can say, honestly, there is a self, yeah desire or selfish motive there and but not that all of it is selfish mm -hmm. yeah that you can just give that to yeah and it's funny when you really admit that <laughs> it is crazy how god will begin really just kind of changing your dreams not not totally yeah um but just you know he kind of guides you like this yep. and um he <gasps> narrows things down and um to the point where now my desires are, I truly just deeply desire to see mm. women to be free and to be, awesome. you know, <laughs> excited and just free from the baggage and bondage yeah. that, that life brings, Absolutely. you know, just through circumstances and hurts and Absolutely. all of that stuff. So, um, now I'm just, I, he's got me to a point where I truly love women i love it I, it's not the the it. stage or the thing it's the yeah. I, I truly love just women and yes. seeing them free absolutely so. and i see that in you and i think it's an amazing an amazing um transformation that you've gone through and it's just it you radiate that yeah. that excitement and that desire i mean it's just it, you can see it in your physical place i can see your heart it's beautiful and you walked with me through that yeah like you you saw me oh. when i was yeah, you know. and vice versa. I mean, we've seen each other through yeah. a lot of issues. <laughs> so it's been good. It's been real. Um, okay, so then as the Lord, you, he, he, like you said, he navigates you, peels back the layers to get to the core of what you think you're here for and what you believe. Um, do you see, like, do you feel like you're narrowing it really down or the Lord's really narrowed it down? Do you think there's more ahead to learn? Um, in this place of like you feel confident you you you've assessed what the Lord's spoken to you and I guess just how confident are you that this is like really final final or do you feel like there will be more and you don't even know what's coming yet still um I think we all think that so I'm trying to articulate yeah. what might no I I um I feel really confident in what he's taught me so far. Yeah. And I also feel really confident that I've literally only scraped the top of the iceberg. <laughs> like, and yeah. he's so yeah. 
magnificent and oh. great and beyond anything I could even comprehend. Yeah. And it's it's almost like, and I think I remember my mom and my grandmother saying this, and maybe my sister, you know, like the older women. I'm like, yeah. the more the older I get, the more I realize I don't know, Absolutely. and I'm really experiencing that. It's like the more he's revealing to my heart, because wow. I've had a lot of head knowledge, sure. but the more he's revealing to my heart. So the good. more I'm realizing, whoa, you're like so cool, and <laughs> and I really don't know anything at all. So oh God. I I can't, I can't answer that. Who yeah. knows? I have absolutely no clue what he's gonna do in a year. Awesome. Or I'm just I'm enjoying where I'm at right now, and beautiful. I'm just gonna take it one step at a time. Beautiful. I love that. Um, okay, so as you were figuring things out, um, what were some of those questions that you had to address? You said that you realized there was like a selfish motive that you did want to be seen on the stage. Um, but at the same time, as God has brought you closer to this place of, you know, a more wise and fulfilled space of Christie's heart, what other things has he had you address along the way um, to kind of filter out the more selfish motives or places oh, in your heart? There's lots so of many. Things. Well, I'm for me anyway. Currently, like right now, today. Yeah. yeah. And the last few days, I've been. He's walking me through rejection and wow. feelings of rejection that are still rooted in my heart. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're. It doesn't matter how much you have learned and how far he's brought you. He's always going to do more and move more refining work. And yeah. so rejection is one that I'm currently today walking through. Yeah. But he, one of the biggest things he walked me through was identity and my Aww. worth in him. Like, and it's things that I've known since I was a little girl. I've gone to church. Like, I, I don't remember not going to church. Right. You know, I was, I was raised in the church and right. it's things that my head has always known. Right. I know that God loves me and I know that he says that I'm chosen and I'm forgiven and you know, all of yeah. these things, but it's some, it's things that the, my heart just was never it, there, it was a complete separation. Yeah. And so one by one, he has completely restored my identity and my worth awesome. in him so that I'm, um, I'm confident in who I am because I actually know who I am now. <laughs> that is awesome. How beautiful. Um, now, as you've gone through this place, are there any people, um, women, men, whoever it has been, who's been very influential who've been important in your self-discovery or in your training or in your realization or recognition of of how to grow as a woman or, you know, take that question how you might. Mm. That's, that's hard to answer. There's so many, so yeah. many. And it's almost like, who have I come and come? Who have I come into contact with who hasn't played wow. a role? Because it's wow. like God has placed people in my life um, just all along the way. Um, and to call out a few names yeah. almost feels um, disrespectful to all of the hundreds of people that I've come into contact with. Sure. So um, that's really difficult. Okay. Uh, but but I, but I do want to give you know, <laughs> some, a, a voice to those yeah. who, who have really stood out Aww. to me. Um, I mean, obviously my, my, I mean, you know, my mom, my sister, my grandmother, they've yes. all taught me yes. um, different aspects. You know, my mom has taught me the, the value. She struggled. She yeah. really struggled and she did the best that she could. She's taught me the, um, the value of hard work yeah. and being, um, just never giving up. That's yeah. the biggest thing she's taught me yeah. that you never give up and you keep, you keep at it. You keep going. Um, my grandmother, she's just taught me what it looks like to just love someone and welcome them into your home. I mean, she's yeah. just, she's such a, she's the epitome of grandmother, yeah. you know, yeah. just loving you and letting you lay on your lap, on her lap when you're 40 years old. That's, so sweet. That's love, you know? So sweet. Um, my sister, what does she not tell me? I mean, she's just, <laughs> she's, you can't put words to that. She's, yeah. she's been my best friend. She's been my biggest cheerleader, my advocate. She's, she's, um, just been amazing, but yeah. Beyond the the women in my family, yeah. it's you know I've had a group of friends, um, and I've had different friends through the years sure. that have spoken different sure. things to me. Um, in my twenties, I had a really really great friend, and um, through my thirties, I had another. Well, actually, that friend I'm still she's still my precious friend, yes. and I've had her from 
from since the age of 18 and wow. she is the longest friend that I've had oh, and, and that's it's precious and we've yeah. walked through some really dark times yeah. together and it's absolutely beautiful and so that's a that's one of those things that I just I learned from watching her absolutely um in the last five years or so maybe a little shorter than that I've had a solid group of girlfriends and every one of them have have um cheered me on and helped me through my my yuckiness because they saw me at my yuckiest and that's I mean that's you you are one of those people and um my friend Paola and my friend Vanderly and my yeah. sister's one of those people and yeah. Tracy and I mean it's just like a whole this whole group yeah. of um just awesomeness you yeah. know but the but God is at the center of it and I think yeah. that's what has made it work and made yeah. it um so encouraging that's so that was beautiful. a really long answer to... Oh, that's beautiful. I think you said it well. There are so many people that influence at different junctures in our lives, mm -hmm. and it's hard to call out each one. But it is. Yeah. Just... And that's just, the, that's just some of the women. But there's, I mean, I've had a pastor who is an incredible teacher, mm. and he's grounded me in such yeah. a... Uh, in the Word, you know? Awesome. And um, so Pastor Steve was amazing. He's my pastor for... I don't even know, 20 or 30 yeah. years or something. Wow. Um, awesome. 20 years probably. But um, my husband, I mean, you yeah. know, my husband has, has just, oh, yeah. he's good. He's obviously walked me, walked with me through my really ugliest times. And yeah. there's just so many people. My grandfather who has yeah. passed away now. I mean, I can keep going on yeah. forever and ever and ever. Sure. But, sure. You know. Well, thank you. I love those. Um, as far as, Okay, for me, and I'll kind of look at the camera here, for me and my development and evolution, I've had to walk through these places where I, I know a woman or women I've found so sharpening and beautiful and just inspiring that I've also felt threatened by them at some point or jealous or comparing, you know, that... that I know that there's something there, but what I, I, I could never be that good or I could never do her thing that well. Have you experienced mm. that? <laughs> but at the same time, how do you know when it's truth about a woman or when it's negativity and something that's meant to block you and your growth or your, you and that woman's growth or whatever? Mm -hmm. How have you experienced that? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and I, I touched on that earlier, just the comparison yeah. game, and I really struggled with that. And there were, you know, a couple of two. There were two main people, of course, like through social media, because that's, you know, yep. you know, I'm I'm on social media every day, yep. and that's the we most common thing that, sure. yeah. So there was two main women, and if it hadn't been those women, it would have been different women. So it has absolutely nothing to do with those two women. Yeah, it just is. Satan, he wants to do that. He yeah. wants to cause division. He wants to do that. And that's what was keeping me, me comparing myself to those women yeah. is what was keeping me from actually fulfilling what God's plan is for me. It was right. keeping like this, wow. keeping me down. Wow. And um, I'm, I'm telling you, as soon as the Lord started dealing with me yeah. with the comparison thing yeah. and um, just comparing myself to, their, to them and their giftings and everything, as soon as the Lord mm. really dealt with that and healed me from that, it's just never been the same. That's awesome. It just it just isn't. And like who am I to I am not I'm not their gifts are not my gifts. Right. And my gifts are not their gifts. And right. neither one is better. And we need each other. I yeah. truly those two particular women and yeah. every woman, yeah. but those two that Satan used to really cause me to compare yeah. and to have that jealousy and envy in my yeah. heart. Though I need their gifts and I need what they are good at. That's awesome. And it um it actually changed from me comparing myself to them to feeling inspired by their gifts. Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. That is amazing. I too have felt that. I've even felt it with you. I mean just And to I be... have with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean just women, it's a real thing and it's mm -hmm. it's a real thing that um I know Christy and I have talked about it with each other before this encounter and we've um brought it up how we've been feeling with each other because we we are a safe place for one another we um have been through a lot so we we both know that we can take these things to one another without um condemnation or ridicule and we'll truly encourage and pray for one another so it's we aren't each other's enemy ab 
Amen. We're not each other's enemy, Amen. right? Yep. And Satan wants you to think that that person who you're having a hard time okay. with is your enemy, and that's not your enemy. It is just Satan trying to Absolutely. cause division. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfectly said. Who would you say that you find beautiful and why? Um, that's a difficult question. If you'd asked me that several years ago, I would have very specific answers. Um, you know, looking at Hollywood, one of the people that I've just always found physically attractive yeah. is... Um, Angelina Jolie, I For love sure. her lips, just the just her look. She's absolutely beautiful she too. Is. And over the last several years, God has been changing my definition of what beauty looks like. Awesome. And um, so I would say that I was I was pretty shallow. And when I thought about beauty, I I definitely just thought about the physical aspects of of beauty. And as God's really growing me and changing me, my definition of beauty has definitely um expanded so people that i find beautiful i mean that's a hard question i, I find you absolutely beautiful um oh, thank you but my um there's just so many aspects of beauty so you can't just narrow it down to um physical aspects of beauty um there's uh gosh there's an a lady um that i didn't I knew her as a child, okay. and she was my neighbor as a child, and she was an elderly woman. Oh, she was wow. probably in her 80s, and she was my next-door neighbor. Her name was Charlotte. She had this long, beautiful, oh. white hair, wow. and um, every so often she would go out and brush her hair oh. out in the yard, and then she would put it up in a bun. And for whatever reason, as a 10-year-old little girl, I thought she was absolutely <laughs> stunning Aww. and and she was it was just this femininity that she had that yeah. she possessed but beyond that it was she would sit with me um i was a latchkey kid i was home a lot alone got it and um so she would sit with me and just talk with me and okay. she just kind of spend time with me and i just thought she was absolutely beautiful I love it. um another person of course this is a um a biblical example of beauty is I find Esther absolutely gorgeous. Now awesome. we know, like the Bible tells you that she's sure. beautiful, but I don't have a clue what she looked like. <laughs> and cul culturally speaking, yeah. she may have not been very pretty to me, what Maybe. I consider pretty. But just looking at reading about her, I find her so beautiful, the strength awesome. that she possessed and the obedience and wow. just who she was as a person yeah. causes me to just really truly believe that she was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, Let's see, there's another. Okay, here's an example from, from just like, you know, currently. Sure. There is a woman who I kind of, I just would spend a lot of time with her. Her and I would go and get dinner together. Awesome. And um, she was a younger than me mom, so maybe she's about eight years younger than me or so. Got it. And um, so kind of a mentor-ish role yeah. that, that I had with her. Okay. Um, and just watching her physically, she's absolutely beautiful. Aww. She has blonde hair. It's long. Awesome. She's like stunningly gorgeous Beautiful. but yeah. um but that's not what makes her beautiful to me either it's the um it's her desire and her willingness to grow and to learn and her humility wow. um and it's just wow. absolutely beautiful I love so it. yeah her name is jessica and yeah i find her absolutely beautiful so wonderful. that's a few people i find beautiful. i love that that's mm -hmm. wonderful tell me um who are some people women whatever they might be um mentors or someone you're mentoring even, people who inspire or sharpen you and why? Um, my husband inspires me. He inspires me. He's totally opposite as I am. <laughs> and so for a long time, it wasn't inspiration, but more irritation. <laughs> Honestly, you know, sure, because people sure. that are opposite than us yeah. tend to get frustrated. For with. Sure. But I've, I've come to the place where it really does inspire me and I need his giftings. That's I need awesome. what he's good at. So he really inspires me just with his, um, his logical abilities and the ways that he's able to like, like just manage money for, you wow. know, or just, just different things that's completely opposite of me. Absolutely. And that inspires me. And I, I love that about him. Wonderful. Every one of my children inspire me, oh. um, for different reasons. And sure. that could get long. There's six of them, but mm -hmm. my children inspire me on a daily it. basis. Um, my grandmother inspires Yay. me. I love my grandmother, my mom, my mm -hmm. sister, they all have inspired me. And really, if you look at anybody, anybody can be an inspiration to you. Sure. And there's, there is the goodness of God in every single person because we're created in his image. Awesome. So we can be inspired by really anyone. 
That's awesome. My group of friends inspires me. Um, my my group, my core group of um, friends, they inspire me. My Facebook community actually yeah. inspires me. They really do. For sure. Um, what else? Okay, and so this is this is a couple people, men, that inspire me. Um, man named Kenny Sacked, and he is the director, founder, and director of Wipe Every Tear. And just to oh, yeah. see his um, his love, his pure love yeah. toward those girls and desiring freedom for those girls is beautiful. Wonderful. It's like a, it is a father's love. It's, it's probably the closest thing that you could see that I've seen on earth of a, of a heavenly father's love. You know, Sweet. he's just a remarkable man. Um, then there's a, um, a man that I've gotten to know over the last year or two, not really gotten to know, but Todd White. Yes. I love, <laughs> I love his passion wow, for and sure. just his rawness and realness of his love of the father. And that's really inspirational to me. Awesome. And then my, um, my grandfather, my papa, he inspires mm -hmm. me. He was such a solid, gentle man. Um, and just always so loving. So he's been really inspirational, but right. really honestly, anybody you look at, you can find God's goodness in them and they, they are an inspiration. So. I love that. Um, okay. So just let that segue into what would you tell other women, younger girls who are coming up into this season where they're starting to become aware of comparisons? Um, maybe women who are a little closer to our age who have gone through a space of being a wife, being a mother. And now it's like, wait, I want to, what are my dreams? Like, there's got to be a little more to life than just this, even though it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. a beckoning. I feel a space in my heart that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Um, what would you tell other women or people, um, about how to navigate that part of their life and their, their time? The more you can rest with Jesus and just be with him and just delve into that intimate place with Jesus, yeah. the more he's going to bring up and reveal what your heart's desire is, what his heart desire is yes. for you. And so don't strive. Don't, don't just keep trying to do better or to do more, but just truly rest with Jesus and yeah. become more and more intimate with him. And the more you become intimate with him, the more he's going to reveal to you and the more it's going to become evident to you Got it. what he's, you know, desiring for you. That's awesome. So with your childhood dream of being a missionary and now to what I see you doing with your beauty for ashes and your, your vision to see women whole and complete and fulfilled and blossoming, did that evolve the way you would have thought no. going from that to this? <laughs> Not at all. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to live in another country and I'm going to walk with a backpack in the little villages of Africa. And you know, that's yeah. what you have in your mind when you sure. think, no, that's not it at all. And sure, maybe I'll do that someday and I would absolutely eat that up and love it. But that's not the, that is not the point. The point is for mm. everyone to experience his freedom. Awesome. And and that, awesome. that I'm I'm right here. I am a missionary right here, and I've got women all around me, that and so cool. it's just so fulfilling when you get to when you get to share what God has done in you. Yeah, you get to share that with people, yes. and then you get to see them experience that same oh. thing. That is the good news. That's the oh, gospel. Lord. What Jesus has done inside of you, and you sharing yes. it, and beautiful. It's just exciting. I love that. Well, tell me then a little about where you're at now and this journey that you're doing with Beauty for Ashes and anything else that you might just want to talk about that's on your heart. Um, okay, <laughs> so Beauty for Ashes is a division of Adventures and Missions. Adventures and Missions is a um, mission organization based out of um, North Georgia, and um, my daughter, Haley, our oldest daughter, went on a nine-month mission trip um, all around the world. Amazing. Okay, there's some jealousy right there. <laughs> so if you want to talk about comparison and I jealousy, know, right? <laughs> even like even your daughter, you can even yeah. you know have to work through that. So sure. there we go. Um, no, but that year that she was gone, those nine months that she was gone was nine months of really the Lord really honing in yeah. with me and healing a lot of areas in my life. But through her going on that, I was introduced to Beauty for Ashes, which is a division of Adventures and Missions. Okay. And it's the women's ministry division. And um, so I, I went to the training and I uh, now I host 
retreats for small groups of awesome. women. Um, groups of women, like five to eight women is yeah. where I try to keep it. And um, we go away for a weekend and we, we just, it is, we invite the Holy Spirit into that place awesome. and there's like some teachings and we do a lot of just a long time yeah. and um, it's just a lot of healing and really, really just, it's awesome. So I've done five now and it's, so um, cool. it's never, he, each retreat, I'm more and more convinced yeah. of his faithfulness and his awesome. goodness to be there. Awesome. Um, yeah. Has it led you out of the country at all? Yeah. <laughs> I went to India last June. Oh, wow. And which was absolutely amazing to see those women who are completely oppressed and yeah. um, talk about bondage. Those women, they don't even they don't even mm -hmm. understand that they have literally any worth at all. They've never spoken about, about anything. Um, there's yeah. a lot of abuse over there um, by yeah. husbands and things like that, yeah. and it's never spoken about. And to see those women get in groups of their own peers yes. and then feel the freedom to be able to share yeah. and walk through healing of that, wow. that was incredible, Amazing. absolutely incredible. And um, then in October this year, I actually get to go to the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited about that. And that is so cool. um, sex trafficking that is very big in the Philippines. Yeah. And I would highly encourage you to just really look into that and without preconceived ideas of what you're thinking that it is. Um, but I get to, I worked with, um, it's called Wipe Every Tear, um, an organization in the Philippines last March. We got to go visit Haley when she was over there. And so we worked with Wipe Every Tear and we go into the bars and we just introduce the girls to freedom, let them know that they, that they are actually able to get out of that. And um, mm. a lot of the girls came back with us on the bus. And so wow. this trip in October, I get to go and minister to those girls Amazing. who have come out of the bars that are living in the safe houses right now. Amazing. So. Really exciting. That is really exciting. Yeah. And probably just so fulfilling and you you must run the emo the emotional gamut like highs and lows <laughs> and like confusion and then yes, I get it to Yeah. I don't even know I'm my not poor done husband. That. <laughs> no, like seriously, my yeah, I'm all over the place. But um no, it's good. And he's even teaching me about that, about like having, yeah. you know, letting my emotions, yeah. you know, be a little bit more even healed. <laughs> Haven't conquered it yet, but <laughs> um, no. And even just saying this stuff, I'm like, is this me? Is this like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe I, wow. I went to India and I, that's just crazy. Oh. And then I'm getting, I get to lead these retreats. Like I get to do that. It's such a gift. Like it's so so cool. That is awesome. Like, well, having experienced the Beauty for Ashes retreat myself, I just, if there's anyone out there who wants to be connected to Christy and um, experience a retreat, feel free to message me or to message Christy. Um, I cannot speak more highly of you as a leader of the uh, organization as a whole as it um, brings forth growth and recognition and opening like of our senses to receiving from the Holy Spirit. It's powerful stuff that I wish I learned when I was a little girl, Me you too. know, like Me how, yeah. how much more advanced could we be in our, in yeah. our walk with the Lord, but he's got us in our right. place in our, per in his yeah. perfect timing. So I yeah. trust that. And retreats, it's not me. It is totally 100% God. Like that's, I'm just there to usher you into yeah. his presence so that he can so do his nice. things with you and um it's it's not me it's Aww. it's completely him and he's so good and well, so faithful he is, so. He is. you're <laughs> humble but you're being obedient and i think as you've been so courageous to step out mm -hmm. and take that leap of faith your your obedience has opened doors for mm -hmm. <laughs> freedom and healing for me for other women and so don't minimize your role in it thank you <laughs> and um it's just a really special time so it you really, guys should all it try really it. <laughs> it really is it's really good so, it's so good <laughs> well i think that pretty much concludes um most of my questions all of my questions is there anything in your in your heart or on your mind that you would like to say or i don't think so i just um I just want to encourage you in your in your walk with the Lord, really, just to go that next, you know, we're all on a journey, and wherever you're at in your journey, um, you're not, 
you're not too far gone and you're not far enough along. You know what I mean? Just do start right where you're at and the Lord meets you right there in that place and it's absolutely beautiful. So wherever you are, just go that next that next little step with him. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking this time with me. I just, I love you so much. I and love you too. You radiate and I just, you look beautiful in your gown Thank and you. dress. And I, just, <laughs> I love you, Christy. I love you too. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.